When police came to her door that day with shovels, she said, I was expecting you guys. She was the grandmotherly type, five foot three with huge glasses and short curled white hair, admired for taking care of people in the shadows of society. But she was also one of the country's most infamous lady serial killers. This is the story of Dorothea Puente, the worst roommate ever. Hi friends, I'm Katie, and this is Katie Does Crime. Sacramento, California, 1988. Homicide detective stopped by a two-story powder blue Victorian home, the last known address of a man who had dropped off the face of the earth. The boarding house at 1426 F Street was a last resort for mentally ill people, those with drug problems, or elderly folks with no one else to take care of them. The owner, Dorothea Puente, was seen as an angel for taking them in, but that day, the detectives would dig up a leg bone and a decomposed foot in her backyard. Dorothea Helen Gray was born on January 9, 1929 in Redlands, California. The sixth of seven children, Dorothea would see her father die of tuberculosis, would stand the abuse of her alcoholic prostitute mother, and then lose her mom to a motorcycle accident a short time later. Dorothea and her siblings, now orphans, were split between relatives in foster homes, and Dorothea allegedly suffered abuse at the orphanage where she ended up. So she left to make it on her own as a working girl in Olympia, Washington, at the age of 16. There, she immediately found a husband and had two children with him, but she didn't want any part in raising them. She put one child up for adoption and had relatives take another. Her husband divorced her after three years, so Dorothea went back to California and then spent four months in jail for forging checks. She was supposed to stay in San Bernardino on probation, but instead left for San Francisco and found a new husband, and then another, and then another. Dorothea was a drinker and a gambler, so her marriages were the kind that lasted all of one week sometimes. But her union with Roberto Puente lasted 16 whole months, which must be why she kept his name. After her last husband left her, Dorothea must have thought, I can't nurture a marriage, and I gave away my kids, but you know what I'd be great at? Taking care of people. So she opened up her first boarding house for the elderly and recovering in 1970. It's no surprise that she was soon found to be stealing their benefits checks and lost her house. After that, she worked as a caretaker, but she stole from her clients after drugging them and was sent to prison. A psychologist there diagnosed Dorothea with schizophrenia and said she was incapable of remorse. But she was released three years later for good behavior and opened up her second boarding house. She made a habit of accepting people who lived on the fringes, who wouldn't exactly be missed if they simply disappeared. But when 61-year-old Ruth Monroe died from a Tylenol and codeine overdose in April 1982, the cops did come calling. Dorothea told them that the woman had been so depressed over her husband's terminal illness that she must have done it on purpose. And they believed the grandmother, Dorothea. Three years later in 1985, she hired a handyman to do some work in her home, and as a final request, she asked him to build her a box. A six-foot-long box. It's a little too on the nose. But the handyman suspected nothing when she said it was for storage. The two were on their way to a storage facility with the box when Dorothea told the handyman to pull over, and I absolutely love that he was driving Miss Daisy here. And she asked him to just dump the box into the Sacramento River nearby where people often left junk. It was about a month later that a fisherman noticed the suspiciously coffin-like apparatus and police found an old man decomposing inside. It was later discovered to be an ex-boyfriend of Dorothea's who'd become her pen pal when she was in prison. But no one was able to identify the body at the time, so Dorothea was free and clear. Another three years passed, and that's when the police showed up her door to search the house. 52-year-old Bert Montoya hadn't had contact with his outreach counselor from Volunteers of America, and she didn't believe, Dorothea, that this man who struggled with homelessness and mental health issues had just gone on vacation and then moved to Utah. But that was the same story Dorothea fed to the police, and she had another boarder there to back her up. Only, as the police were leaving the boarding house, the tenant gave them a covert message. She's making me lie for her. They came back with shovels this time, searched the house, and asked if they could have a poke around the backyard. Dorothea even lent them an extra shovel for their trouble. She watched for a bit from the second-story porch of her boarding house, and then asked if she could go to a nearby hotel for a cup of coffee. With her nephew. Well, they mucked around in the backyard, you know. I'm sure they figured she couldn't get far. Where she got to was L.A., and in the meantime, they discovered seven bodies buried behind her house. They were wrapped in sheets and duct tape, and they were almost mummified. Dorothea had left her house in a long red coat and purple heels, carrying a purse that concealed a few thousand dollars to keep her afloat while she hid out. One of the detectives had even escorted her to the hotel for her coffee. 
It only took 21 minutes for them to find the first leg bone, but she was gone by then. Luckily, a fellow bar patron in L.A. recognized the elderly lady next to him from TV, and Dorothea was arrested five days later and escorted back to Sacramento. She told reporters, I used to be a very good person at one time. Sacktown Magazine reports that Puente's neighbors and acquaintances murmured disbelief that the white-haired landlady who handed out homemade tamales and fussed over her rose beds and vegetable garden could be a mass murderer. She was so known for her charity work that the house had a photo in it of Dorothea dancing with California Governor Jerry Brown at a fundraising ball. She also took in stray cats and cooked amazing meals for her tenants. Although the mounds of dirt and the stench coming from her backyard suddenly made a lot more sense to the neighbors. No cause of death had been determined for any of the nine victims Dorothea was ultimately accused of murdering, so her lawyers argued that she was just a sweet old grandma who, you know, stole a little from people, whatever. She'd had a troubled childhood after all. Who could blame her? Dorothea's lawyer said she didn't report her tenants' completely natural deaths because she was afraid of violating parole by running an unlicensed boarding house. But a drug used for insomnia was found in all seven of the bodies dug up from her backyard. So with the help of over 130 witnesses called to the stand, the prosecution claimed that she would drug her victims and suffocate them, let the bodies rot inside the house for a while, and use prison workers to dig and fill large holes for their bodies later. She would then steal their social security checks, $87,000 of them in total, which she partly used on a facelift. There's also a story about how she drugged a man to the point that he could only sit helplessly watching as she took a diamond ring right off his pinky. It took weeks for the jury to deliberate thanks to Dorothea's supposedly charming disposition, but they ultimately convicted her for three of the murders and gave her back-to-back -back life sentences without parole. She spent her time in prison reading mystery novels, watching murder shows on television, like you and me, and lotioning up with Victoria's Secret Love Spell. At the age of 82, Dorothea Puente died in state prison of natural causes on March 27, 2011. Until her final days, she claimed that the only time her tenants were in good health was when she was taking care of them. She insisted she was innocent. Now, what's interesting to me is that Dorothea wasn't actually that old. Despite her grandmotherly appearance, she was really only 59 years old at the time that the bodies were discovered in her backyard. She would just wear those, you know, massive glasses and take her teeth out to look older. And there are some other wild details about Dorothea that would make her such a character if, you know, she wasn't also a killer. She claims that the Rockettes hired her to be a dancer in New York City despite her lack of formal training, and that she once met JFK and Jackie Kennedy because of that and became friends with actress Rita Hayworth. The Rockettes, of course, have no record of her ever being with them. She also says she was friends with Ronald Reagan and once had dinner with Clint Eastwood. And that she won $10,000 on a 1950s NBC show called Feather Your Nest, while also playing a few tournaments on the newly formed LPGA tour. And that she used to have twin daughters who committed suicide one week apart. And this part's actually true. One of her husbands had her committed to a psychiatric ward in 1961 after a boozing gambling bender she went on. But Dorothea also briefly ran an unauthorized alcohol rehab program, and it seems like maybe she really did have a deep desire to care for people in a way that she hadn't been cared for in her own life. To her estranged daughters and siblings, she was all but dead, but to her tenants, she was everything. But something in her would eventually just snap. You can still visit 1426 F Street in Sacramento. It's been declared a historic site and can't be torn down, and the current owners embrace its sordid past. And if you want to own a little piece of Dorothy Puente history, you can still buy Cooking with a Serial Killer, the book of her recipes published by one of her prison pen pals on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below, and you'll have to let me know if any of those recipes call for a stock made from leg bones. Thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube video. I'm just a true crime fan like you are, and I really appreciate you taking this chance on me. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you like spending this time together. I'd be so appreciative. Until next time, I'm Katie, and this has been Katie Does Crime. She made a habit of, I think I said that weird, when the box, Oh, shoot. Sorry. On my way. Oops. So sorry. So sorry. It was about a month later that a fisherman noted the... Um, darn it. And she had another there. An, darn. And she had another... Sorry. That's just hard to say. You can still buy a cooking with cereal. Sorry. And I really appreciate you taking this time with me. That's not what it says. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs>